On today's episode, we're talking all things 22 Arc. Now, the 22 Arc is a brand new cartridge for us for 2024. We start the podcast talking about some of the history of the 22 Arc and some other available Wildcats early on. We talk about some of the comparables between the 22 Arc and what is also available on the market in some other cartridges. We talk about bullet design. We talk about what factory ammo options are out there for you. This is an exciting new cartridge. We think you're going to like it. For more information on this cartridge and all 2024 new products, check them out at Hornady.com. I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik, and today around the table, I have to my left, our Assistant Director of Engineering, Joe Thielen, and across the table, Senior Ballistician, Jaden Quinlan, and our Marketing Director, Neil Davies. Guys, thanks for coming around the table today. Yeah, Appreciate great it. to be here. Thank you. You bet. Yep. We're excited to get around the table today to talk about something that we all love, and that's new products. And right now, it's new product season for Hornady. Uh, we just launched all of our new for 2024 new products. And the one, I mean, there's a bunch that I like, but one of the most exciting products, one of the best innovations that we have for 2024, brand new cartridge, the 22 Arc, the double deuce. And uh, it's easy to get excited about this one. Yeah, it is. It's a fun cartridge. Fun cartridge. And I know, Joe, you've been shooting it for a couple of years now. What I'd like to do, let's talk about what makes this cartridge awesome. We'll talk about some of the design attributes and, and some of the performance aspects uh, that, that make this cartridge so awesome. And then before we really get into the really nitty gritty on design and some of the technical aspects, I'd like to rewind the clocks a little bit and have a look at maybe what the industry was doing you know, several years ago and then what brought us to where we're at now with the 22 Arc and, and why this is the time to release this cartridge. Religion. So what are some of that, that wave tops of what makes this 22 Arc so awesome? Well, the, the 22 Arc, and you guys jump in here, but to me, it is another one of the, the cartridges that the chamber, the cartridge, um, bullets, development, all that stuff was done in tandem, like all the other cartridges that we've done. So it's efficient. It's elegantly designed. Um, it works. It's very accurate. And then you can load and you can shoot any 22 cal bullet of it bullet you like out of it just like the creedmoor family and the pr family all the things we've done we've basically mm -hmm. given you another modern 22 cartridge in an ar-15 that has extremely high performance that you can do a lot of things with mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. some of those things being obviously it's got some match application which we'll talk about uh varmint hunting is a big one long range shooting in general but long range varmint hunting and then we'll talk about uh night hunting and you mentioned the bullet weight options. You know, we've got factory ammunition out there with this launch that takes this thing from lighter weight, higher velocity, varmint style, up to our biggest, heaviest match bullets that we make in 22 caliber. And Jaden, talk to us through a little bit about that, that like Mitch, or excuse me, like Joe mentioned, the, the chamber and the cartridge design and how we do that concurrently and what that gives the end user. Why is that a benefit to Absolutely. the consumer? Yeah. Well, there's, there's, uh, attributes from each that, uh, have a hand in the performance that you observe, right? So there's some things about the cartridge design that contribute to how it performs. There's some things about the chamber design that contribute to it. Um, and then other specifications like twist rate and, and things along those lines. But with the 22 arc, what you really have is the highest performance 22 cal cartridge that is operable in both an AR platform and say in a bolt gun. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of been lacking in that area for quite a while. We've as seen, an industry. As an industry, as, as, a, as consumers having that option, right? You either have to go wildcatting to try to find that option. There's been a couple attempts to gather it. You know, I'm sure we'll talk about the little history piece, but the, right. the 22 uh, Nauser and Valkyrie, uh, 224 Valkyrie, leave some things to be desired. And and what you've seen with, with the cartridge introductions from Hornady is we're trying to not leave anything to be desired and not limit you in its application. They're, they're very broad application cartridges. So like you said, this thing will work really well in the match world if you want to shoot the heavy, sleek 22 cal bullets fast, but you can't say 22 cal bullets without the varmint world having a piece of that conversation. Yep. And we all grew up with that, right? Mm -hmm. I had a 223, 22, 250 was 
you know, screaming right past my 223 bullet because yeah, those things are so fast. On the way. But the, the, that's really where the 22 cal world, I think, gets used heavily, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and we wanted to make a cartridge that would allow you to go, go hunt varmints, whether it's daytime, coyote, nighttime stuff, prairie dogs, whatever it is, and get the optimum level of performance from a factory package, which th there, there hadn't been anything to date that checked all those yeah. boxes. And you mentioned something that I want to call out that we've done with really all of our cartridges from the most recent seven millimeter PRC back to the six, five Creedmoor is we're not relying on hot, nasty speed to do the work. We want the efficiency of the cartridge plus the efficiency of a properly designed bullet to work together, give the consumer an accurate platform, uh, factory rifles with factory ammo, just produce good accuracy, good muzzle velocity, and really efficient bullets. So Yeah, I mean, Steve, Steve Hornady nailed that the other day. I, I don't remember what we were listening to, but it was a, maybe it was a recording or a podcast or something that he'd been on about performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, Years gone by, everybody just looked basically at, at muzzle velocity and, and bullet weight or whatever and right. figured, let, let's just go there. Those that are the was, two metrics that That, that was the measuring I mean, stick. And, How fast does it go and what weight And this cartridge plenty bullet. fast. It, that is not a concern. Right. But there's so many other things that come into performance versus just, you know, crazy speed. I mean, okay, can it, it, will your gun handle that kind of... Uh, uh, velocity, what's it going to do for accuracy, all these other things, and then downrange performance terminally, uh, let alone your your uh, external ballistic stuff that you got to contend with as well. So, I mean, there's so many things to it, but yeah, I think I think hopefully now people are starting to look at performance uh, from a different mindset now. Right. Like, okay, it's, it's more than just muzzle velocity and just this raw speed and power. Because again, you're, you're going to shoot a bullet, right? So what's that velocity? What's the twist rate of the firearms? Mm -hmm. Is it going to torque that bullet apart? Uh, how's that bullet going to do terminally at this uh, velocity window. window? There's just lots of things there. So yeah. I think, you know, with what all of our uh, engineering staff has come up with is, yeah, we're trying to educate people. Performance is a little more than just that now. It is. It's 100%. a lot more nuanced. And I think the 22 arc specifically really embodies that. It's It's efficient. It's versatile. It's accurate. It's just it's just a sweetheart of a cartridge, and it is as far as Sammy approved cartridges go. There is no other 22 caliber cartridge out there that is this well rounded. And Jaden, you mentioned the 22 250 is that's kind of the iconic, you know, long range coyote varmint hunting type mm -hmm. cartridge, and it doesn't do the match stuff well in its Sammy configuration, and this one does. But to go back to the 22 250, you know. This cartridge, it's new, the 22 arc, it's new for 2023, but like uh, Neil's kind of alluded to before recording here, we got to rewind the clocks, what, 13 years ago or so yeah. to get back to the beginning of this thing? Yeah, so I'd, I'd gone up uh, to the Sand Hill somewhere around Hyannis with Les Johnson. 2010 time frame? Yeah, about 10 or 11. Uh, it probably was about 11. Um and uh, so Les is a 22250 guy back in the day. I mean, he did some AR stuff and did other things, obviously. But that 22250 was kind of the the go to for extension him. extension of his hand. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I've seen him do some amazing shots on coyotes, running coyotes, and that with the 22250. So, um, yeah, and so did everybody else. I mean, if you were a Western coyote hunter, Joe you, you you had a 22250. That, that's mm -hmm. just a, that's a staple, and and will continue to be one. Um, but anyway, so I'd, I'd come back from that trip with him and I came back into the office on a Sunday to drop off my computer or whatever it was after I got back. And Mitch Middlestat was in there, our, our director of engineering, and just started talking to him about it. And I said, you know, Mitch, it'd be, why, why don't we have a, because I was shooting a, an AR at the time. 223. On that trip. Yeah, mm -hmm. 223 with our 53 grain VMAX back then. You, did you design uh, that bullet? Somebody designed that. Yeah, yeah. It had to be about that time frame. Yeah. So I had been shooting that and it's great, but you just get wowed at the speed and, you know, instant, uh, incapacitation yeah. with the 22, 250, uh, a lot of that due to the velocity. So I said, Mitch, man, you know, we need to do something that's, you know, that, that kind of equivocates or equals or whatever we can here, the 22, 250, but in that AR 15 platform. So Mitch put pen to paper and he, he drew up the jumped into autocad yeah you know and had some fun with it because i mean mitch mitch is a big air guy he loves ars a lot of things there 450 bushmaster all sorts of stuff and so he designed up what you know he wrote on there is the 22 coyote uh which was bait so my conversation with him because my ballistic uh, uh 
engineering capabilities are extremely limited. <laughs> I get by with a lot of help from my friends, mm-hmm. but I was like, yeah, we'd done the six, eight SPC a few years before that. I thought, you know, like, what if we just neck down the six, eight SPC and Mitch also was a, a big fan of the Grendel and for good reason he said, well, no, I think, I think neck down the Grendel, you know, I get a little more powder capacity in yeah, there. Yeah. And so he, he drew up the 22 coyote fast forward to where we are now today. And this thing just didn't see the light of day at the time. I, we were pretty busy 2011. I don't recall everything that was going on, yeah. critical defense, critical duty, all those things were probably taking place. And a lot of advancements yeah. for our, for our industry, but specifically our company in that time frame you're mentioning, Neil, gosh, there was home there was run product whole, after yeah, home run was, product. There was a well, ton. And we were lacking projectiles too. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you can design that cartridge, great cartridge. And you didn't have the, we had the, the bullets that we had then yeah. that mm-hmm. we, we don't have now. Yeah, that's right. I and mean, that, in our off camera conversation, it's a good thing this huh. didn't come to be because we'd have been, we'd, yeah. uh, we'd have done the same. ourselves into a corner. We would have. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that was, uh, you know, something you guys kind of talked about and flushed around and, and you'd mentioned Mitch being, you know, a tinkerer and, and yeah. not, not necessarily a wildcatter because he worked at an ammunition plant. So it's kind of not. But this is as far as it went. Like, I but don't yeah. even know if he made any okay. cases or anything no like chips. that. It just, no it just got made. to here and then. Okay. Just like everything, somebody has to be a big proponent of it internally, and then you got to sell it to ownership, obviously, at some point. Or in your case, or some of our cases, you just make cases, and eventually yeah. it comes to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Look at this. A hundred free bullets when I buy these select Hornady reloading tools. Wow, 500 free bullets with certain Hornady reloading presses and kits. Well, what do they have? Let's get loaded. There's no better time to stock your reloading bench. Choose from the most durable, precise, and convenient tools on the market and receive free bullets to get you loaded. Visit Hornady.com for further details. Next time we get loaded, I'm buying. So as that was going on, uh, there was always the Wildcat world and the Grendel cases out there and the SPC cases out there, and that's being necked down and played around with, and it existed solely in the Wildcat world. And there was probably some really cool guns made in those Wildcats. Well, uh, fast forward a few years, the industry started to catch up a little bit, but they just missed the mark. So some of those cartridges that came out, as Sammy approved the 22 Nosler and the 224 Valkyrie. So let's talk a little bit about what those cartridges did to try to advance the industry in the world of high performance 22 caliber AR offerings. Um, and then maybe where they missed the mark a little bit and how that kind of fed what soon would become the 22 arc. Mm. We'll start with the 22 nozzle because I think that one was first to market in 2017. Yeah. Uh, 22 nozzle really took uh, the, the varmint world and used the old method to address the problem of if we just make things really, really fast, things get better. Right, because yeah. in the varmint world, you're you're doing dealing with unknown ranges a lot of times. Mm-hmm. You want something flat shooting. Yeah. Coyotes running away on time yeah, You don't have tight. time to exactly. range that time. sucker. He's coming on a hill and he's yep. coming in hot. And yep. so I think what they looked at is, well, hey, if we can just juice up the velocities. Now, granted, you already had juiced up velocity. That's called a 22250, yeah. but it only existed in a bolt gun configuration up to that time frame. I'm sure some guys had or done a an AR-10 10, or something, yeah, but, but, who but they were not common, ones? right? And so what Nosler did was they they tried to capture some of that performance idea of the speed and get it into the AR-15 because that's beneficial, you know, uh, second shot follow-up, multiple coyotes, whatever it may be. Mm, Sounds great. However, the the limitation was the way they designed the the cartridge case, you could only use legacy lighter weight bullets in it. And everybody knows once you get out there, if you don't have the the solid aerodynamics in the bullet, there's going to be performance kind of left to be desired. So you're basically not necessarily equating the 22 250 you're using the same bullets yes they're in an ar-15 but they're not really going any faster yeah, and you're not picking up any wind deflection right numbers. Correct. it's faster than a 556 five, or a 223 in an ar-15 so that's an improvement but it's still it's not a huge leap right okay um then you see the 224 valkyrie come out the 224 valkyrie was kind of a shift in in paradigm from that 22 nozzler in that they specified it with a fast enough twist rate that mm-hmm. it would stabilize the heavier bullets and they shortened the case up enough or using a different, you know, uh, configuration that you could seat those bullets in there at mag length. The problem there is the the dimensions of the chamber and the cartridge 
If those things aren't paired correctly and certain dimensions aren't right in relation to, to each other, there will be performance issues with that or performance gains if it's done correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and with the, 20, the 224 Valkyrie, um, you know, you were working with me back in those days when we did the, the 88 grain load, um, which was, you know, if you go look at it compared to the other heavier bullet offerings out there in 224 Valkyrie, it's a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is we had to sacrifice velocity to get the, the level of precision that we thought was mm-hmm. adequate. Yeah. Um, if you pushed it to the competitive velocities that other guys had, it, it shot like crap. Yeah. It didn't uh, do well. I mean, yeah, that was, there's, we have a specification where we hold our match ammo to, and it simply wouldn't make it at right. those velocities. That's right. And so that cartridge I would describe as finicky, meaning that if you change very much of it, it's very responsive. You see big changes in performance. And that's not something that you, you want to, you don't want to exist in that realm because you have to control everything so tightly just to make, maintain that performance that it's, it's difficult to do in production. Mm-hmm. You would rather have a design that's very robust and allows for small little normal variations to occur, but the performance is static. It just stays the same, even considering those yeah. small variations. One of the things that I've noticed when we were doing the, the load development for our line of 224 Valkyrie ammo was yeah, we did all of this work. I mean, days and days worth of work with the 88 grain load to try to make that work. Just when you think you had it, it quickly slipped away. And then once we did have it, then we went to the 60 grain load and it was like we were working with an entirely different cartridge on an entirely different planet. It was very much a, a different load development process. And it also interacted with the shoulder fired guns that we were using for some of the development process outside of our test lab. Uh, it interacted with those in the gas systems way different. Yeah. Um, and if we had a gun that shot well and cycled great with the 88 or the 75 grain load, And we'd throw our varmint load in there and it just didn't work the same. And that was very frustrating. And like you said, it it wasn't, it was clear that it wasn't designed as an all-inclusive, very well thought out process. Right. So that was, gosh, over, I mean, we're talking over half a decade now, which it doesn't seem like that long ago. So where in this timeline does what became the 22 arc really begin for us? Because I remember when I left uh, the ballistics world to move over here to marketing, uh, I had just received some pressure barrels in uh, and we were doing some initial pressure and velocity testing on what would become the 22 arc. And that would have been 2020. It's been on the cover of my new product folder that I have, you know, yeah. all these projects listed on since we've done the six, up, six arc. So 2020. Yep. So, I mean, as soon as we did that, it's like, okay, great. You know, the 22 coyote, let's, yeah. let's get back on this thing because <laughs> this is real. So for you got me, a lot of patience. Neil. Yeah, well, you know, you, you got to pick your time. We've had a couple other things like, you know. Yeah. And we knew, so we we knew for a long time that we we, we wanted to do something yeah. there. But to me, we knew we lacked the, and you touched on it, we lacked the projectiles, properly designed projectiles for the use cases that they were going to be used in that maximized the cartridge to its fullest potential. Did, did this cartridge... Uh, uh, lead to the ELD VT bullet? Well, they were, so or, or, I mean, is the chicken made, or the egg, which one? It, 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 the, the VTs were made a long time ago in a different form. Yeah. Back in that, the AMJ. So it's like you ago. took the concept of the VTs and then now, oh, we got the concept for a cartridge and you're like, put those two together. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was, then it's like, okay, now we got to go. Yeah. And, and that's what made so, this yeah, thing they, roll. Okay. So some of the some of the push for the 22 arc came from those early days of the six arc, and and whenever we you know introduce a new cartridge, you know we're obviously making ammunition. We need to partner with the gun guys or the barrel guys to to get that second half of the equation put together and do those things in tandem. And a good friend of mine that that's at one of the other companies in the industry, one of our partners, um, he was heavily involved in the six arc uh, in its early days, and he had taken it and started messing with the 22 version of it. He was shooting a 75 grain. ELD match and absolutely loved it. I mean, he was sending us some data. Um, with from, that set with the six arc with the initial K or did he neck down a Grendel? So, so no, he, he, so he had modified the six arc case, which the 22 arc is not just a neck down six arc. Mm-hmm. Um, it's different, but the data that he had sent us and, and from his messing around, it was like, wow, this is pretty promising. And that, you know, adds up with your timeline of discussing. We, we didn't really have a bullet prior to that, that would, you know, because again, you can't talk 22 cal without varmint being there. And so if we just took what is the 22 arc and 
put a 50 grain or 55 mm-hmm. grain or 53 we, grain VMAX in it. We'd have a me too. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a it's a 22 nozzle all over again. And so that really gave the, it was kind of two different tracks going on at the well, same actually, time. And then there's another one. That's when thermal hunting got way more popular. Yeah, that's and true too. Predator mm-hmm. control and stuff. Yeah. And I was hunting with my friends here in Nebraska and they were shooting bolt. I remember vividly, they're shooting bolt gun, 22 creeds, and I'm shooting an AR in 223. And at night with the way things work, that, that more speed with those little bit heavier bullets, just flat out anchored coyotes better. There's like you said, with Les Johnson, 2250, the principle is the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. those things all come together, yeah. the, the bullets, the cartridge, the AR, thermal honey, it's all coming together and we're like okay we, we've that's got like it. a culmination it was, yeah like, this one is a, a definite culmination of a bunch of things like put these pieces of the puzzle together and we can offer the consumer a better mousetrap to do more than one thing better than they have now and yeah. everybody's also got to keep tools. that in mind too this you know one of the this fits in an ar-15 so there's other options out there if you want to go in a ar-10 yeah, you mentioned the 22 creed or, or yeah. bolt guns let's say there's plenty of things that the work mm-hmm. in, but you know when you get down to ar-15 configuration yeah this is, this is and they don't have to be 24 inch barrels right. either that's right. what now you got suppressors i mean this so anyway it, it, yeah it's a culmination of a whole bunch of things that i guess we're trying to succinctly put yeah. together well there was that, you've got thermal one becoming uh one just more mainstream popular two more affordable you have suppressors, more mainstream, popular. I'm going to say this pseudo easier to get. Um, there's companies like Silencer Central and Silencer Shop that make the process a little bit more streamlined, although it still takes a while. Uh, and then you have bullet design and technology, yeah. the, the quality of AR parts. All of those things kind of erupted together to be like, this is the perfect time for the 22 arc. And you mentioned, Jaden, that it's not simply a six millimeter arc neck down this cartridge case is it's kind of its own beast in the length that is a little bit longer than the six millimeter arc mm-hmm. um, what's the reason for the longer case well when you go from six millimeter projectiles down to 22 generally your your lengths are a little bit less mm-hmm. and so that means the amount of case intrusion and stuff like that that you have is less so we were able to bump the cartridge case length up a little bit because you didn't have as much of the bullet sticking down perfect in there. Give and, it a little more fuel tank. And we only want to have so much of that occurring, bullet intrusion into the case. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's some performance um, performance that's tied to that, you could say. Okay. Well, we'll talk about performance real quick. We're just going to hit some design aspects. So uh, everything we design, we put a 30-degree shoulder on there for the most part. Yep. Um, and that just, one, it's a nice sharp shoulder without being so steep that it's hard to manufacture. Yeah. You know, you 100%. look at 40-degree Ackley shoulders, 35-degree shoulders, the propensity to punch that shoulder when you're producing brass or ammo just higher so 30 degrees best of all worlds and it's a 0.441 bolt face the grindle bolt face or the arc ppc bolt face so what does it operate for pressure uh 52,000, just like the the arc and the and the grindle before it. all right so you've got really moderate pressure because when you say 52,000, that's the maximum average pressure yes and we'll generally load our ammo less than that yeah, it'll be course. around 50 right so when you start thinking about high performance, sometimes I think of short barrel life when you look at like 220 Swift or mm, something sure. like that. Even 22, 250. Yeah. yeah. So now you've got this high performance cartridge that operates at really modest pressure. Um, so what's the twist rate in this thing? Uh, seven twist. So we introduced this to Sammy with the seven inch twist and we've recommended to all of our industry partners in the barrel and the, the firearm world to go with that seven twist. And we'll yeah. talk about why that twist Seems rather fast, uh, but why that's important for our bullet design, because that's an aspect that, that makes this cartridge do what it does. And uh, so the one and seven twist, and then we've been talking about ARs. This cartridge is equally at home in a bolt gun. Mm, yeah, correct. Today's episode is brought to you by Hornady Security Rapid Safes. Using patented RFID technology, you get the quickest, most dependable access to your firearm when you need it the most. Check out the full Rapid Safe line at HornadySecurity.com. You know, the AR is great, especially at nighttime, and you get familiar with that, that system where the controls are and everything. You don't need to see anything. If it's dark out and you know where your safety and your mag drop and all that is. But for me, I just have this affinity to awesome bolt guns, mm-hmm. custom made bolt guns, <laughs> and man, a 22 arc and a little slick bolt action rifle it just flat works uh 
deeds well. And, and again, as an industry, we're at a point where we have the tools to do it. So that's the cartridge. Now, I want to talk, before we get into ammo, I'd like to talk about bullets. Because we've been talking about the VT bullet that's new for 2024. And between the 6mm arc and the 22 arc, that really kind of fueled that technology that uh, the 22, or excuse me, that the VT bullets have. And for the listener, if you haven't familiarized yourself with the VT bullet, we just released a podcast that we detail all of the design attributes of this VT bullet and how awesome it is and how it's that dual use kind of hybrid performance for long range target shooting and long range varmint shooting. But let's talk about the bullets that are going to be used in the arc and why that twist rate is necessary for even our lightest bullet option. Sure. Yeah. So the, the first, uh, the first bullet's going to be that 62 ELD VT, um, which is, uh, we talk about it in the other podcast, but when I tell you it's a 22 cal 62 grain bullet, you automatically kind of assume what it looks like mm, and it doesn't yeah. look anything like that. Yeah. Take and, what you uh, think it is and yeah, erase control, yeah. delete. Yeah. yeah. And this goes back to, you know, that, that, uh, twist rate and stability podcast we did where we dove in detail and we said, it's not about bullet length because everybody thinks, oh, stability is a function of bullet length. Well, no, not necessarily. And, and in this case, you'll see you have to, this thing is so slippery. Uh, you have to have that seven twist where a typical 60 grain yeah, bullet would be stable in a much slower weight. twist. Bullet weight. Yeah, exactly. So, so when you think of that bullet weight, right, yeah. you think of very short bullets, but okay. this one's totally different. Yeah. Um, so it's not the weight that is of great concern for stability. It's the length of the bullet. Oh, it's yeah. Or a combination multiple, of both. Multiple things. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then next you have a 75 grain, uh, ELD match bullet, which that comes from, you know, kind of that early testing that was done by our, our, uh, our friend in the industry, that's what he was shooting was those 75s and the, the data he was generating was pretty hard to argue with. I mean, that bullet is in 22, that, that one's a, that, yeah. it's awesome. Yep. That, that, yeah, the, yeah we'll talk about that one speed, here in a moment, the, but the it's. The speed to efficiency trade off of that one is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that'll be in the, in the black line. And then you have an 88, the, you know, the heavy. Uh, Premier, if you will. Yeah. And because, you know, when, when Valkyrie came out and we offered that 88 grain option, there's a lot of people that were interested in it, in that, right? Mm -hmm. Um the Valkyrie lives left some performance to be desired. Well, the 22 arc with the 88 ELD match completely crushes what the Valkyrie did. I mean, you're up over a hundred foot per second on nearly velocity at a lower pressure mm -hmm. and it shoots really, really well. So for the guys that want that option for, for shooting matches, it's there as well. Yep. And you've got all of them. And then we talked about that 75, that my favorite word is juggernaut because it really is <laughs> tangential. Yeah. yeah. So the, where the 22 cal, when the Valkyrie came out specifically, one of my whole, one of my hesitations with it was some of the advertising stuff that came out was it supersonic to whatever it was, 1300 yards or 1400 yards. And I kept thinking like, it's a 22 caliber. The amount of people <laughs> that can shoot it or, or want to shoot it at that distance is very, very small. Where I am concerned is that half mile mark from the, from the 880 yard line in that's where I want the performance in a 22 cal. I want it fast. I want it flat and I want it there with no wind and the 75 grain ELD match in the black line from a 24 inch barrel is doing nearly 3,100 feet per second. Mm. That gets there right, right now. now. And like Joe mentioned, the, the efficiency to velocity trade-off is, is really good, man. It's incredible. Now the 88, that's a, that is a really low drag bullet. And from a 24 inch barrel, that one's doing about 2820 at the muzzle, which is pretty that's darn appreciable. Legit. And so, uh, that's, you know, for the and, match and, setting, that's And great. Seth has given a presentation on the, on the 22 arc about 75 times yeah. at this point in time. So, <laughs> yes, I have. so he's got all this stuff memorized. I promise you. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. Uh, on, honestly, but it's easy to memorize it because I'm excited about yeah. it and it's easy to get excited about. And I'd like to, to kind of dive into each of those lines of ammo now specific to the 22 arc uh we talked about the match line that's the the white box hornady match ammo that everybody's come to love that features the 88 grain bullet then we have the black line now the black line traditionally will feature a slightly more economical bullet think of like a boat tail hollow point which is you know got good accuracy and it's really versatile well for us that 75 grain eld match was such an efficient bullet there's just no reason not to put that in the black yeah, line yeah yeah and then the, the I, don't, I hate to call it the flagship or the premier, but 
for me personally, that new V-Match ammo, that it's a line of ammo that is centered around our new VT bullet. Man, in 22 arc, it doesn't get much better than that. So let's talk about that. And Joe, you've been using some variation of this mm-hmm. ammo for nearly two years now uh, in your coyote hunting escapade. So let's talk about that bullet performance in that ammo. So for me, when I can have, and I'm just going to come out and say it, and we can talk about the numbers, but when I can get my old 22 250 performance in my 18 inch AR 15 with a suppressor with a thermal on it, it was a, it was so easy. I mean, I started shooting five, five, six, 53 super performance, get killed lots of coyotes with that, plenty of them. And it works great. But when you get out there to a little bit further ranges at night, th- th- it's hard to anchor those coyotes right there. And that's what you need to do. They can't run over the hill. You lose them. Mm-hmm. And this and that. And the new ELD VT bullet in the V-match out of a twenty two arc was magic, especially mm-hmm. past 200 and two, 250 yards and out. It was phenomenal. And then on like follow-up stuff. A lot of times you're calling in multiples at night and you mm-hmm. kill the first if you're one. Lucky. And kill the first one and then the other ones take off and you can you can get on those. It's it's so fast, your leads aren't too bad. You don't have a giant field of view, you know, a lot of times with thermal and finding them. Yep. So your leads and bullets are there so fast and at three or four hundred yards you can literally just anchor them now. Like a yeah. twenty two two fifty. I think that will resonate with the, the users out there. 100%. I really do. And yeah. that I mean, it's a quarter of a mile. That's a that's a poke. And those those kills where you're talking about you hit the coyote and it just anchors them, you know, inside of 250 yards. Yeah, the year 223 with the, with the classic VMAX bullet, it's going to do great. Yep. Where this bullet really shines is in velocity retention. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Energy, velocity, and wind drift. And a lot of guys exactly. are going to look at the two cartridges and be like, okay, so you're yeah. telling me that this little tiny thing performs like this big thing with all this powder capacity <laughs> exactly. and everything in that case? Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and the way that yeah, it does that bullets. is, yes, you've turned down the dial on the velocity of the 22 arc compared to the 22 250, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't hit yeah. 3,600 yeah. feet a second, but what you did is you turned up the dial on the efficiency of the bullet, yeah. and that's where you see those things yeah. cross. So, it's like Spinal Tap. This one goes to 11. That's right. So, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, there's lots of cartridges that are pretty flat to 200. 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or there's even a lot 300. of that. I mean, yeah, yeah so even if, 300. But man, once we start airing it out a little bit things are going to change and yeah. that's and where bullet efficiency comes into play and then energy on target yeah. yeah you you got the velocity then you can't get away from you want to anchor something that's that's what you need you need right. an expanding bullet getting there with enough velocity to, to do, do the job to take right. care of business yes yep. and so for night hunting this thing has quickly become an internal favorite i know for a lot of guys yeah. like joe and it's we've awesome. got miles and jacob and jade and everybody running around at night doing fun stuff because it is an incredibly fun thing to do this just makes you more effective. Yes. Yeah, 100%. And it doesn't get any it, better than that. Yes. And I don't remember the exact numbers, although I should, uh, but I do know when you compare our factory varmint ammo, you've got the 55 grain VMAX in a 22250 from a 24 inch barrel. It's doing 3,680 feet per second. Yeah. Yep. Blistering fast. Nearly 4,000. That's a made up number. And then you've got the 224 Valkyrie with a 60 grain VMAX doing 3300 and then in the middle here you've got the 22 arc with a 62 grain bullet doing 3300 it's only two grains heavier so it can't be that vastly different than the 224 valkyrie and it certainly can't keep up with nearly 400 feet per second velocity slower and the reality is if you look at the trajectories you look at the velocity at distances as close as 200 yards you have several inches worth of superior wind deflection the energy retention at range is not even in the same universe. Yeah. Velocity retention past 250 yards is significantly better uh, to the tune of, yeah, I think at, at the 500-yard line, it's something like 34% mm. uh, less than the 22-250. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just when you lay out when you Well, you did that. When you lay out the curves on there with energy, uh, energy on target, retained velocity, yeah. Wind deflection trajectory at two, just the number that we talked about, 250, 200, 300 yards, that 62 has caught a 55 and now is going to start in the further you get on range. Yeah. And wind deflection is the big one, huh? The wind deflection for me is big. big. At 500 yards. Think of a coyote standing out there and he's, he's what? Six inches wide? Seven inches wide? I mean, a big dog and he's standing there booger barking at you. And in the Western states of, of, of America, there's, there's usually some wind. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, there's always wind. And I, that's what I wanted to touch on earlier. Out here we live with, in the wintertime, a lot of them are on pivots. Those center pivots are a half mile from, you know, if you did a diameter across them. So to the center, a lot of times it's 400 yards. Yep. But I mean, that's, there's a lot of coyotes get shot out in center yeah. pivots at night. Uh, yeah, four so. or 500 yards. And with a 10 mile an hour full value crosswind with those ammo skews that I just mentioned, the 224 Valkyrie, the 22250 in the arc, the arc has 40% less wind than the Valkyrie and 34% less wind than the 22250 at 500 yards. So, I mean, think about that. Substantial. Like coyotes, that's a huge, that's, that's a, remarkable. That's a hit yeah. or a miss. When, then, I, when I was a kid, I've shot coyotes with my old 223. I didn't have a 22250 back then, but at four or 500 and I lost those coyotes. Sure. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. And that's back when I was hunting them for bounty. So yeah. Man, and there was I actually had, money in it. If I had this when I was a kid, I'd, <laughs> I'd be <laughs> so trouble, rich. Huh? I've, yeah. shot a, crazy. I've shot a lot of coyotes at 400 yards with a 22, 250 and they're alive when you get there. You, yeah. you knocked them down and they're there, but mm-hmm. they're alive yet. They're mm-hmm. still a little sassy. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So. And one of the cool things here that I, we haven't harped on yet, but in those comparisons is the trajectory. Yeah. So in all of those examples that i gave that's with a 24 inch test barrel those velocities well if you zero those at 200 yards obviously the valkyrie falls off into oblivion but the 22 250 despite nearly 400 feet per second of an advantage they are on top of each other with the 22 arc and that 62 less than an inch of separation between three and 400 by the time you get to 500 virtually identical past 500 now you're flatter but that's 22 250 that's what you want and Better wind deflection the whole way through. The and whole ener- way through. And so. energy on target. Because that's what... I'm, or wind an bucking inch, ability. Anyway. An, in, an inch of elevation, I'm going to kill the coyote. You know a difference? Between yes. 22, get an inch, whatever, I don't even care. I'm going to hit that coyote every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now I've got energy, wind deflection, all the things. So, I mean, when yeah. that's, I go back to a 22250 out of an AR-15. Yes. yes. And that's a bold statement. And one one of the things I'm sure we'll, you will hear is a 26-inch 22250 versus an 18-inch 22 arc. Well, and that's comparing apples to oranges. Because if you cut back your 22 250 to 24, 22, 20, 18 inches, it's going to lose velocity like everything mm-hmm. else. And so if you keep it apples to apples with a barrel length conversion, the efficiency of this new VT bullet just makes this thing a home run. And, home run. and you Absolutely. can't, you know, another thing to bring up is you can't shoot this 62 grain VT out of a 22 250. Mm-hmm. So without or, custom twist. Without, yeah. Right. You got to build. Right. Yeah. Yep. That is very, very true. And that's one thing. Uh, in, in, we talked about the bullet design here to, you know, the VT bullet kind of culminated with the arc cartridges. What, uh, Jaden, you can talk to us about this. I lamented in doing the 224 Valkyrie load workup because awesome. We finally got the 88s to work. Oh, we finally got the 75s to work. Well, the sixties don't work well, now. Nah, nah, yeah, back to the drawing start board. over. Concealed carry, personal protection or home defense. Only the best will do. Critical Defense Ammunition, developed to provide the best performance for personal protection, no matter what platform you choose. Delivering consistent, reliable performance, every single time. When lives are on the line, only the best will do. Hornady Critical Defense Ammunition. What was the design uh, methodology like? Because uh, for me personally, one of the last cartridges that I did some of this stuff on was like a seven PRC and it's just like, Oh, it just works. Yeah. That was easy. What was the low development like for the 22 arc? Same thing. When we, when, when you and I did two twenty four Valkyrie, three weeks sticks in my mind of mm-hmm. how long it took us from start to having the load specified with 22 arc. It's like an hour, 30 minutes <laughs> and yeah. then, and then go do the temperature testing. Oh, and it passed that. And okay, now let's go do dispersion testing. Oh, it passed that. And it's like, you know, the initial, the initial test was easy, and then all the follow-on testing where we kind of ratchet up how hard we're testing the load, it was, just fell right in place. It was easy. Yeah. Which is what happens when the foundation is correct. That's what I was just getting ready to say. When yep. stuff is properly designed and dimensioned and chambers and cartridges are made to work together, yes. that's what should happen. That's right. Awesome. Well, and it, it has worked like that. Everybody I know that has shot it or has built a gun, it just flat works. And Oh, it was the giggle switch when we did it. We did a rider event. And, I was going to bring that uh, up. So, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal no. your thunder. Talk about but, it. Holy cow, yeah. So, I mean, we, we give these presentations. It's in anticipation of the new product season coming about, so we get ahead of it. So they've got time to start writing articles that will drop around the same time that uh, we announce these new products. So we met with the, a big group and 
so we had a couple of these rifles out there and boy we probably ruined the barrel on that uh bolt gun that's my uh, personal yeah, bolt gun yeah. so you Sorry. might need a new barrel yeah. so but holy cow those riders would come over there and each one of them you know we'd give them ranges to these targets and tell them out what to, to do. almost a half a mile and just ting bang done you know every single one of them left the gun just oh man well and they not, could not, see and they, it remember it, that i saw that i saw where it hit like, and yeah, like to a man and a woman that were there they they they're Who's who's gonna be uh, chambering this? They all oh, want that was they yeah, all want that, guns. And yep. I feel like you know because we share that that event that you're talking about. You share it with other companies and stuff, and so you can kind of get see how other people are reacting to other products out on the firing line. And just like Neil mentioned, there wasn't very many that got behind the 22 arc, shot it to six seven hundred yards in a pretty challenging manner because it was 28 degrees uphill. Uh, They'd come off of there. All right, where, so where can I get a gun? Yeah, who's who's making barrels? Because I want one before the fall. I want to use this for coyotes. I, 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 I don't want to say I'm not going to like sing our praises necessarily, but we, we have to consider these folks get to see every type of firearm, every new cartridge, oh, yeah. every every they're new configuration. Mm-hmm. So when they're actually excited about something, it's meaningful because mm-hmm. they they see everything. Yeah, and they can they have access to everything. Yeah, they precisely. can get whatever they want. But oh, I'm excited! I'm excited about this. Yeah. That was. It was cool to see, and honestly, um, Neil, you'll know the conversation I'm talking about, but we get people that ask us, oh my gosh, how, how do you guys do what you do, you know, and like, what kind of market research, and do you like, do like a sales analysis on like this new stuff that you're thinking about coming out with? It's pretty complicated. And it's <laughs> like, you know what, when every single person that touches this project is like, okay, yep, I'm ordering a barrel, I'm going to build one today, yeah. Yeah. That's, you just, you yeah. just know, and yeah. you, can, you can sense it. Uh, and when it's easy and the accuracy is easy and the velocity is great and the trajectory is flat and it does what we say it does, it's just the easy button, you can tell it's going to be a success. And I'm confident this one will be the same. Well, and another reason easy, speaking of easy button is the six arc has been extremely popular. Oh yeah. Cartridge has done. It's, it's a great cartridge. Now you can, if you have a six arc, you can go get an, an upper. I mean, you could do just a barrel. Yeah, sure. But I mean, you could get an upper. Yeah, and now yeah. you have a twenty-two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's yep. it's so easy to do. And in the precision rifle world, where a lot of us are running uh, barrels that have guaranteed headspace, it's just a barrel. If you're already already running a six arc, you're talking on oh yeah, on, on a bolt side, gun, same thing. Yeah, just, yep, it's just, just a barrel. And it certainly has that application. Yeah, I mean, you, that's. I mean, think about. Um, there are definitely some people that would shoot it in some matches. I know of one good friend of ours that mm-hmm. will be shooting it in a gas gun. Yep. Um, but yeah, you can also use it for a trainer setup, something like that too. So it's got a lot of application there. Really, you know, when you think about that, I didn't think about it in the trainer setup, but you know, a lot of us in the competitive world, we like to practice. You need to practice, especially if you're, you know, as good as Joe, you can't stay yeah, at right. that level of competition without practice. So now you could build something that gives you the ability to practice for your competitive sport, have amazing barrel life compared to other Hot Rod 22s, factory ammunition available that just shoots great. And it's awesome for long range varmint hunting at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. You win, win, win. A lot of versatility. And it does have plenty of match application. We spent a lot of time talking about the 62 grain, but our 75 VLD match in the black line or the 88, the 88. And if you're a hand loader, you can hand load our 90 grain a tip in the PRS gas gun division. Are you kidding me? Um, I mean, that puts you really competitive with, you know, you think the 90 grain a tip, you're 10 grains of weight and like. Fifty thousandths of an inch different than a lot of those competitors are using in and six an millimeters. Air, and you're shooting an AR fifteen on an AR ten, so you've mm-hmm. got less, all the inertia you know, and everything, movement of the firearm and all yeah. that stuff going on. Yeah, but uh, yeah, an eighty eight grain ELD match at 2,800, 2,850 feet per second, depending on your barrel length. Mm-hmm. In the gas gun that's, division, that's you, legit. Yeah, that is. Uh, you're not giving up anything there, and it's going to be nice, moderate recoil, flat trajectory. That's any of our guys shooting that for anything. For six PRS? Yeah. We have uh, we have sixes now, yeah. just because yeah. this one's so well, and I, well, we've been mainly we build using cases. it to, to shoot critters at night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, been, yeah that's what you've been doing most of it. Like yeah. you're, you're talking about, like the you know the product development and how do you guys do successful products and market research and all that stuff. No, it's uh, we're working on a product where this Friday when the kids are in bed by like <laughs> nine. I'm going, I'm taking it. I'm going out and hunting with it. Yeah. Like th- that's the products you're working on. And the guys that are involved with it are that excited and doing yeah. that sort yeah, of gonna, stuff gonna, with I, it. I'm it'll gonna, be successful. I'm going to, you know, someday when I retire, I'm going to teach some business class and it's going to be a very short class, like <laughs> secret to success. 
Instinct. Okay. Yeah. Make class cool over. stuff yeah. that people want to use. Yeah, make stuff yeah. that people like. Yeah. yeah. And and deliver it to them. Yeah. yeah. That's the other thing. And and I think uh, another point in that very short class would be to be cognizant enough to to detach from what you're working on and look around and make sure this is the right time. Yeah, and sure. It goes back 100%. to Mitch's yeah. drawing that that you and him uh you know did and in it might have been it, this might have been good then, but it, it, it wouldn't it's be way great better now. now. Exactly. You know? I mean, it's exactly. way better now. Yep. yep. And that's when you, you can step back and just like we talked about, you had the thermal game getting more expen or excuse me, less expensive and more popular. Suppressors, night hunting, bullet technology, uh, gun parts, and everything culminated into now is the perfect time for this cartridge. And uh, it's it's one of the coolest products new for 2024 in my mind, not just from Hornady Manufacturing, but really in the industry. It'll be fun. People will enjoy using it. So yep, yeah, you'll hit what you're aiming at more often when you're shooting stuff far away. And for me, I need all the help I can get. And that is, uh, that's one of the benefits you hit what, what you're aiming at more often. And we were talking about a whole bunch of things here, but one thing like Hornady, this, the culmination of all these things, that's, what's fun. Why it's fun to work here. I mean, we get yeah. to do what yeah, we like, sure. like you want to write that down. I want to write, it was, a. Uh, it was a while back here, Jason. I want to like I want to quote what he said. On oh, it was a uh, new. Products. We sell fun. Yeah, but he was saying he was talking about the. Oh, he was talking about bullets or something. Anyway, and he's like, "Yeah, we're a bullet company. We could just make bullets. We don't we need it. We don't need a Doppler radar. Yeah, we sure. don't need a high speed. We don't need all that stuff." But no, we're gonna make we're gonna make bullets until we make the perfect bullet or the perfect cartridge or whatever. His yeah. his point was, we're not satisfied. Just, to we're not sat here just sat here making stuff. No, we're going to push the industry and push design and push the limits of stuff, you know, yeah. I, I really culminated with me. I thought that was a really good quote. Yeah, it is. And it shows his passion, which was his dad's passion and his dad's dad's passion about innovation. Yeah. 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 Making cool things, making mm -hmm. stuff that they want. hundred you percent. Know, from yeah. three generations worth. And, and, you know, now all, obviously all of us get to kind of be part of that too. It's yeah. fun. It is a good time. So in, in summarizing the 22 arc, you have a cartridge that was properly designed from the chamber and the cartridge standpoint uh, it's got a lot of the design attributes that we put into the arc line into the creedmoor line into the prc line a lot of those similar design attributes you've got a twist rate that was purposefully selected to work exclusively with the bullets that make this cartridge great uh, a lot of versatility in what you can use from you know the vt line all the way up to our biggest baddest a tip bullet that we make you have a cartridge that was designed to fit and function flawlessly in an AR-15, but is equally at home in a cute little bolt gun. Uh, works great with a suppressor that is the ultimate dual-use kind of cartridge where you have the VT line plus those heavy match bullets where if you're a long-range varmint hunter or if you're a long-range target shooter in a gas gun or bolt gun, this cartridge is just, mm -hmm. it's just fun in a box. Oh, it is. It's great. Did I miss anything in that summary or did we miss anything discussing the timeline and some of its design and, and application? No, no I, I don't think, think so. I think we did pretty good. I, I mean, one, one thing I've said it on your podcast a hundred times and I'm, I'm a firm believer in this, that my rifles and ammunition and bullets that I use, I, I believe they're tools in my toolbox for doing different jobs. And I would leave the consumer with a 22 arc in an AR 15 is a better tool in my toolbox for some of the jobs that I do. And specifically for me, yeah. I mean, personally, it's the, it's the hunting thing and it yeah. is, it's a better mousetrap. So. Yeah, yeah. Particularly on the, yeah. For varmint hunting and things, it's going to, it's going to run away. It's a rocker. Yeah. It's awesome. I've never wanted to be a coyote, but I don't want to be one more now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Neil, this is tangential, but Colt Wall just uh, released a song here in the last month. I'll have to have you listen to it. It's about being a coyote. No. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I love Colt Wall. He's awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I don't have anything more about the cartridge other than I'm excited about it. For the consumer that's listening that wants more information, Hornady.com. Lots of uh, gun makers are going to be having guns chambered in it. That's where I was AR headed. AR side, sorry, and yep. you know, uppers and everything like that will be available. Barrels. So, are we know, going to do the list on our website again? Yes, we did so, that with yep. 6ARC and yep. that was Hornady.com. Nice place. Go to the landing page for 22ARC and we will have oh, all man. the gun builders that are on board and we've worked with a lot of them. And even if they're not listed right this second, it doesn't mean that they don't have something in the works because like I said, we 
we've been talking to them for several months now before this launch um, getting you know design their designs kind of uh, and, perfected and, and pretty much all your favorite barrel makers are going to have barrels available through retail outlets presumably but mm-hmm. so it, it's game on i think we're gonna people will be using this thing this this winter for sure uh, yeah. you can sign me up yeah. i'll be using it this winter for sure yeah and me too <laughs> got one one gun already and another one in the works yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome guys well with that i appreciate you guys uh walking us through the design the application our new line of ammo, the bullets, the history that I didn't know about. And uh, I think our consumers are going to gonna find a, a pretty darn, lack of a better term, badass cartridge this year in the 22 arc. 100%. Perfect. Awesome. Everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this podcast about the 22 arc. For more information on the 22 arc and all of our 2024 new products, check them out at hornady.com and we'll catch you on the next one.